Okay, so that was a a good experience for me to see how um, you know the process that I, as a as an administrator I have to go to go through to to evaluate teachers and 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 watch their class and, and pay attention to the methods that they're they're using to to teach their students. And so um, first, instructional strategies used during the lesson. Um, there was really a wide variety of uh, instructional strategies that she really uses. Um, and some of them, you know, if you don't recognize what she was doing, might not seem that, that impressive. But there was actually several things that were really, I think, really good about what she did. Um, one, she was constantly using collaboration. Um, and you can tell it's part of the crescent, the culture, and that's that's really true. In uh, you can just as as observing what she was doing, you could really see that she's worked on the culture of the classroom, and so she uses a lot of collaboration. She does definitely does direct instruction, but during that direct instruction time, she's modeling what the, she wants the students to do. Um, she's um, reteaching. She's doing. She's thinking aloud. She's She's providing visual aids. Um, she's gu guiding their practice. So she's she's doing a lot of things um, during that process, using technology to do that with the uh, with the iPad. And at the same time, because she's using the iPad to to demonstrate the work, she can walk around the classroom, and still it's projected on the screen, so everybody can see it. But she can monitor the classroom and see what's going on, and kind of move to problem areas um, without being tied to the board. So. So one of the things she does to differentiate instruction is um, is she has it, because it's a collaborative situation. The students that are getting it and understand, they are getting additional help, and they're 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 being challenged because because they're the ones that end up helping um, those that are not quite getting it. And so that's a, a really a powerful uh, tool. Having each other, having them help each other, because you know it's an easy way to different, differentiate instruction. And differentiating instruction is not something that's always easy to do. And so it's a powerful tool. Um, student engagement, it's pretty strong. Um, she has a, the engagement a lot. The, the kids were engaged, but the, the issue here, um, it's a it's a highly motivated group of students. They are wanting to do what they're supposed to do and do well in school. Um, and so they were they were very motivated to pay attention, to get the right answers, to, to, to learn what they needed to learn. Um, although you did start to see during this time, like when she was conferencing with other children, you did start to see the engagement drop off. Um, but she recognized that pretty quickly and, and addresses that, talks to them, and they definitely focused better after that time. Um, so the, then the classroom procedures and management that she had, she did a lot with, um, because she was working on the iPad, she could move around the room. Um, but her classroom procedures, it's very clear that the students know the routine. They come in um, they know they're, they're going to have the bell work question is going to be about what were the problems they had with the homework the night before. Um, they're used to using the poll everywhere to where they can say, put up what the numbers are that they have problems with, and then she can address that. Um, and so that, that routine is very clear. Um, there was many students, there were actually a few students, I shouldn't say many, there was a couple students that needed to get up and go to the restroom there was no hand raising, no interrupting what she was doing. They got up, went to the restroom, signed out, went through the procedures, came back in, um, and and there was you know just they just took care of themselves. Um, they followed the school rules, but they didn't um, disrupt the the learning environment. And so that was a really that was really interesting to see because in a lot of classes, you know, you'll see students interrupt the classwork, interrupt the teacher to ask to do those things. That class, there was no interruption, and only two students went. Now, you know, that'd be interesting to see what the difference would be, perhaps in a in a classroom with was with, with less motivated students. Would that would would only two students leave to go to the restroom, or would six or seven 
kind of start to do that and abuse that. So, but uh, it was clear that within that setting, it was it was a very good way to use. So she's thought about the procedures and how the management should be. Um, the learning environment was was definitely solid. Um, the kids were were uh, were engaged. They wanted to know what was going on. Um, she has um, a lot of different seating styles. So there's bean bags with low tables. There's um, the you know, different stools and different kinds of chairs, different kinds of seating. She wants the students to be comfortable. She gives them a variety of different things to do, um, ways that they can sit to be comfortable and, and be engaged all at the same time. And so the culture really is take care of your business, but be comfortable. Take care of yourself. Take care of the work and take care of yourself. So truly, in a lot of ways, treating them like adults. Um, they're not adults, but treating them like they're responsible giving them responsibilities, and then treating them responsibly, um, like they will be responsible. So what went well? I, one of the things that I noticed when I was going through this is that I had a good tool to use. I had a good walkthrough checklist, and so that was really helpful because there were certain things that I wasn't even necessarily catching and as I was looking through the checklist, I was like, oh, yes, that's happening, or, or maybe that's not happening. And so having a really thorough checklist seemed to be a very helpful tool for me. And so that was something that, you know, as a, as a future administrator, I will want to have. Most likely that's going to be a district decision, what your walkthrough um, checklist looks like and what it is that you're looking for. But even if it's not, you know, to have... Um, if there's not something that the district's provided, then you know that's something I'll want to develop for a campus to have something good, solid checklist to look through. Um, so the next question, what would you change? Um, so she gives quite a bit of freedom, but these are motivated students, and so they don't you really abuse it. Um, there may have, I, it would be interesting to see um, what in a similar class design with less motivated students, how that would work. Um, you know, is, is, is that possible to do in a classroom with students that are not as, as highly engaged and not as motivated to get the material, to get good grades? Uh, and so she, it's really well done. It really works with those students. I'd be really interested to see how it would work in a classroom with less motivated students. So I don't know that I would make a change, but change might would be necessary. Um, so I don't know, the next question says, what surprising information was revealed, revealed through this experience? And I don't know how surprising this is, but... Definitely, you know, just in my own experiences as observing the teacher and everything, it really takes focus. You know, you're in there for 45 minutes or an hour, and it really takes a, a significant amount of focus to, to pay attention, to, to notice the different things that are going on. And so that was probably one of the things I recognized is that, you know, you really have to, to come in here ready to focus, ready to pay attention to what's going on, what, what is happening in the classroom. And then how will, this trans how will this experience transform your practice as an administrator? Well, um, it's, it's tough for me to answer that question, to be honest. Um, not having, having had a lot of experience as an administrator, even um, you know, stepping into that role really at this point, um, it definitely, um, I definitely appreciate what um, administrators do um, and seeing that they have A lot of responsibility to help a teacher. So one of the things that uh, this teacher is, she's really comfortable with you coming in. She's she's comfortable with who she is, and and that she's doing her best, and that the students are learning. And so if I can let other teachers know, you know, I'm not here to get you, because she doesn't feel that way. She knows that nobody's here to get you. She doesn't feel like that. And so if I can let other teachers know that I'm not here to get you if, I, if as an administrator, I'm here to, to see the good things you're doing, encourage you in those things, and hey, here's something that you know maybe you can work on. Here's something that, 
that uh, might would help um, and help you grow. Um, this is what I saw. Because we all need to grow. We all need to, to do that. And, and she's not afraid to grow. She's not afraid to um, be better and be observed. I mean, and so uh, creating a culture that where people are happy to be observed and ready to grow is, is probably the biggest thing that uh, I think an administrator can do is creating that kind of culture where, where teachers are, feel safe to, to, to make, take risks and to, to let others see where they're, what they're doing and, and help them along um, where they may need help. So definitely a good experience for me. Thank you very much.